it's my last day in Uganda. I was supposed to spend 10 good days in this beautiful country, but today is 26th, which means that I've spent 26 days in this beautiful country. Who made it possible for me to come back here again? I think I've been mentioned in most of my videos, but this time around, I need to have a conversation with a guy who brought me back to the Pearl of Africa. Do me a favor, if you're an African-American, I know and believe that this guy inspires you. I mean, if you're living on the continent, probably this guy played a major role in your relocation to the motherland. Because I've interviewed someone in Uganda who told me that, hey, do you know who inspired me to move to Uganda? Come along, let's have a conversation. Let us know why he decided to move in here. But before I dive into the video, do me a favor, like the video, subscribe, and be part of this awesome channel. O'Shea Duke Jackson. And that guy is great. You ready? Oh so, shit. Ah. <laughs> we live. We live. Oh. Oh, oh. You think this is a live stream? No, no, no. 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 <laughs> okay. Oh shit, Duke Jackson. Ha! You Good tall, man. I'm getting tall, yeah? I'm so glad. <laughs> it's good to see you again. Yes. I mean, we met in Kenya for the first time. Which year was 2018. 2018. You were a lot uh, smaller than at that time. Yeah, very small. Yeah. I think 70,000 subscribers. Yes, yes, yes. Wow. What brought you to Africa in the first place? So, I, you know, as an African American, yeah. we, you have things off your bucket list that you want to, you know, accomplish. So, mm. Africa was one of them. I was living in Europe at the time. So, um, I decided to take my first trip in 2017. But when I came back, I think I was going to South Africa. Then I finally met you because we were, you know, buddies on the internet. Then, yeah. You're like, oh shit, come to Kenya. Yeah. And so, after talking to you, I never thought I'd be able to have a, a real future here until you told me. And you didn't even really know about your own future because you're between China and <laughs> you're just now getting I, I was actually going back to China. China, yeah. That time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're the one saying, O'Shea, you know, this is this is the, 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 the new frontier. You know, it's better than America. It's going to be better. So um, after meeting you and Dr. Mumi, that's when I, I felt comfortable that I, I could actually survive here. Yeah. And why Uganda in the first place? Because we met in Kenya. Met in Kenya. Yeah. So Uganda. <laughs> well, there's a the EDI mean story, right? So um, he was a very charismatic uh, person. Like him, love him or, or, or hate him. So I was like, okay. And at the time, coming to Africa, I wanted to go to West Africa, Ghana, Nigeria, but there was a lot of the bureaucracy mm. in the getting there. So the Ghanaian embassy wasn't in Poland; it was in Germany. And then the Nigerian embassy. Um, I just think there were like so much steps, mm. bank accounts, you need to have an invitation letter. At the time you got there, East Africa had, you know, visa on arrival. So I said, you know, let me go there because it's, it's, I could just get in, mm. you know, entry very free um, without having a lot of hassle. So that's what brought me there, the ease of restriction. And then uh, everything else from there was great. How long have you been in Africa? Your first time and till now, how many years? So, I've lived here about two and a half years, but I've been visiting Africa since 2017. And what has your experience been like so far? You know, man, he, like my, like my, I have a friend, Kevin Samuels, who passed away. You're, you're building the plane while you're flying it, right? It's been tough. I've had a lot of good things, and uh, unfortunately, some uh, difficult things just getting readjusted to, mm. to being here. Mm. But it's been promising, you know, I've seen uh, a lot of positive things happen that have gotten better, but there's some things that still need to change. Um, so, If you had a chance to change something on the continent, what would that be? Oh man, there's so many things. Um, for me personally? Yeah. Man, I don't want to get deported like you. <laughs> <laughs> I think African, the, the, uh, a lot of the governments in the diaspora, the diaspora gives more money than even China. Yeah. Look at Nigeria, over yeah. 30 billion every year. Mm. And um, some of them can't even vote unless they're in Nigeria. Liberia, same thing. I think that there, if there were more transparent processes that the diaspora can get involved, because we have the greatest diaspora on planet Earth. We have the money, mm. we have the greatest, if we have the Africa Free Trade Agreement mm. en enacted, we have the biggest trading bloc. But now we are, our diaspora is being limited. I, I, I feel because like the, the these other governments are coming in and funding governments. The diaspora is funding its people, and there is a disconnect between that. Hmm. And it looks like the governments don't care about the diaspora as much as they should. 
And if you look at what China and their diaspora is doing, and the Indian and their diaspora is doing, they're able to develop because they're appreciated. But here the diaspora is really looked at as second class citizens. And I'm not even talking about even from us, the old diaspora. I'm talking about the new diaspora. First, second generation, Ghanaian Americans, mm. Nigerian Americans, you know, and also African Americans trying to come back. So it's just been very difficult. So if we could have um, easier processes and enacted, that way we could help um, ourselves develop mm. and help Africa develop at the same mm. time. Because coming mm. here, we are also developing too. Mm. It's not just Africa, Africa is developing us. Does it mean that you have to apply visa whilst you live here? Yes, I have a work permit here. Yes. Work permit? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So is it like yearly? It's, I have one for three years. Three so years. every year is $2,500. 2500 $2,500, yes. $2,500? Yes. Per year? Per year. For a work permit? Yes. That's ridiculous. <laughs> well, for that's, that's ridiculous, you know? Yeah, well, that's the... That's ridiculous. Those are the laws. Uh, so. Because I, I lived in China. Yes. And then work permit in China was less than $300. Per year? Per year. Yeah. And it's the same co uh, cost maybe in Kenya too. So those things, I think, as we get... But, but if you're doing that, then which means that the diasporans are not welcome then. Because if you, if you have to charge them, yeah, you have the money power. Yes. But $2,500? Yeah. To me, I say it's ridiculous. Yeah. Is it the same thing for other people living here uh, or is it just the diaspora? No, 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 no. Any, anybody that's a foreigner is paying that uh, to have a work permit. The same process even in Kenya. I think Kenya may be like 2000 per year or same price. East Africa in general will have. I think Rwanda has a little bit, um, its policy is better. Yeah, so, but the thing is, um, in comparison to Rwanda, you look at Uganda and Kenya, there's a bigger entertainment scene, bigger agriculture scene, more opportunity as far as mm. the amount well, of What are the kind of opportunities that you've seen since you moved in here? I think, I think I, I've seen opportunities that I, I, I've not expected. Let's say, for example, I, I'm from Sacramento okay. in, a, in, in Los Angeles, so yeah. I don't know anything about farming. I used to laugh at people say that, you know, you do poultry farming, but I laugh at you, man, like, what are you talking about, you know? <laughs> and it wasn't until I met uh, Dr. Dan from Farm Up. Mm. Um, shout out to King Obatuna, because he's like, you know, man, poultry farming is big, you can make a lot of money. I was like, no, you can't, like, what are you talking about? So currently we are hatching about 120,000 chicks every week. Every week? Yes, 120,000 chicks. I'm a mathematician, you know? Yes. Uh, how, how much do you sell one chick? I sell one chick, um, for the broilers, about 2,700 shillings in Ugandan shillings and 4,200 for layers. Uh, so you'll just do the math yourself. Multiply that by 120,000 <laughs> a week. I've seen people do it in farming. I've seen people do things in, in, in manufacturing. Hmm. I've seen people do things in um, certain elements of just money transfer, you hmm. know, like uh, in, 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 in West Africa, you see people with the, you can invest in agriculture, you know, a piggy vest in Nigeria. So there's just so many things that you can do here that's countless. Anything you can do in the West, you can do here, but maybe even more because it doesn't exist here yet. What has kept you here for the past two years? What are you investing in the country? Yeah, well, I have the Ken Ghana Studios, but um, in which we produce, um, you know, me as a YouTuber, we are producing things for, um, we even did agriculture here, content. Hmm. Um, now we're going to be in, in, into some like commercials and stuff like that, ads, hmm. things like that. So we have like a, a content creation agency. But what has kept me in Africa is the people. Um, and, you know, having relationships with you to guide me, you know, because I, I, I am a, a complainer. What am I? How do you do this in Africa? Oshé, you need to listen to me. So uh, I think that's helped me. And I'm, I'm more comfortable yeah. here. Yes, I, I've established a, a life for myself here. And I want, I think that the, not even for just African Americans, but there are a lot of Ghanaian Americans, Ugandan mm -hmm. Americans, they've been gone so long. And they ask me, how are you getting by? How are you, how are things happening? So I think that just having the relationships, the right relationships, have kept me here and I'm just, I'm growing every day. Welcome to the Pan-African Dating Show. It's your girl Daddy Sims and today we have with us the matchmaking edition of the Pan-African Dating Show. Right about today guys, I am bringing you someone that is a familiar face to your YouTube screen. You guys already know man like Nicole Me, aka Go, wait, was it Go Black? to Africa. You're creating content with the people. Yes. Um, how many people have you employed so far in the country? Well, we have 10 here. Um, 
we have three in Kenya, one in Russia, you know Dima. Yeah. And we have one in the United States. So our team is 15, but 10 are here. But I, I love the fact that the people that work with you, some of them that I met before, like never had any idea when it comes to video editing. Nothing. How, how did you do that? Because I don't have that patience. <laughs> uh, because I, I, I've seen how you, you brought people from nowhere. Yeah. And then you put them up there. And then even the salary that we pay them is beyond. Yeah. I mean, what is the motive behind that? Well, you know, I think like, number one, as a, a pro-black, you know, pan-African, you have to reinvest into, you, um, into your people. Yeah. And I think when I first got here, I had a Western way of doing things and handling stuff like, oh, you can't do this, you should go. And then instead of understanding that, okay, this person has the, the raw potential, but there's some things that maybe we need to work on as they develop. Like sometimes people are late and things like that, but the person is, you know, he's fast tedious. He pays attention to detail. He really loves what he does. So let's guide the person and hmm. the individual hmm. to where they understand what they're doing. Hmm. And then you'll start to see that they start making changes to the business that you've never seen before. Hmm. So as long as they understand the baseline of things, if they have, you know, tardiness problems or unaccountability problems, we address that real quick. That's one thing we know about being in Africa. Sometimes you're gonna deal with that hmm. instead of being frustrated, just address it real quick. Once you get the, past the unaccountability and why am I late or whatever, and the person understands what they're doing, they'll start actually adding things and they'll take the, they'll take the situation to things you've never experienced. And I've seen that. Your journey is across Africa. What has been the best thing that has ever happened to you? Um, the best thing that's ever happened to me is, you know, let me just say this, because I used to have some, uh, we used to, me, me, me and you have some uh, offline disagreements about the, the African-American versus African yeah. beef. Yeah. But to know that, I feel, and I hate to say this, and this is going to be controversial, but um, I feel that I can live here and be accepted. Maybe they don't look at me as the same person that, like, as a local Ugandan, but they do recognize me as, you, you, you are our brother. In America, we have this situation where the Nigerian person and the African American person may or may not, there's some tribalism there, or the Caribbean, there's some friction. And then you feel like, you know, if I go to Africa, I'm gonna experience that. But you don't, you'd be surprised how many people in Africa are good people and will help you. And once I saw that, I, I called my mom and told her, I said, the reason I'm able to do whatever I'm doing for you right now is because of the relationship I have with these. She's like, what, really? And so she, she changed her mentality. She never knew that black people could work together and achieve something. She thought we could only do it in America. That was the only concept in the 60s and 70s. But the fact that, you know, African can help you, um, you know, help, help you, you know, take care of your mother in California, mm. that's unheard of. Nobody would have ever thought about that. But, you know, just because of the beef that we may have with certain Africans in the community, you come here and people don't care about that. They mm. treat you as an individual. Mm. You know, obviously you have your problems, but people will help you. There's so many great people that have helped me here. And, um, and it's like, well, you know, are, do they like African-Americans? No, no, if, if you're a good, a good person, people are gonna treat you nice. If you can provide things, people will treat you nicely. So you believe that the, um, the saying of Africans don't like African-Americans yes. is just a myth? Yeah, I, I just believe people just don't like people in general. We, we got African-Americans that don't like African-Americans. You have Ghanaians that don't like Ghanaians. I think that it's about um, being a, a, a great person, loving the black people around the world. If you're like, look at you. I, I was there when you got kicked out of, uh, almost out of Kenya. Yeah. In 2018, people thought you were a scammer. Yeah. <laughs> but now when we, we, we came back to Kenya for the New Year's Day, we couldn't even get to the car. Exactly. Without 25 people, hey, what am I, hey, hey, hey. Right? Yeah, guys. And guess who I met? Wow, well, the Agari family. Oh, wow. <laughs> Live in Nairobi, Kenya. Is your first time in Kenya? Yes, yeah, yeah, first, first time, time in Kenya. Wow, and you're meeting what am I? Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> so amazing. God is great. But why you chose Kenya, though? Because I want the children to see nature. Uh -huh. I want them to know I'm away from Nigeria, so we want them to be used to our motherland. So that's wow. why I say, Let's talk the Africa country, guys. Yeah. Yeah, that's essay. Actually, actually coming all the way from Saudi Arabia. We live in Saudi Arabia. Whoa. So people 
people love you because of who you are and what you've done for the continent. Exactly. So that's what people appreciate here. If, if most, I think most of you don't know what O'Shea is talking about. <laughs> um, the first time that we met, I wanted to do a um, Pesa transaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, yeah, Center. They thought I was a scammer. Yes. I, I was Man. with him. Yes. I was with him. And like they saw my green passport. They're like, ah, that's a Nigerian. Nigerian, yeah. <laughs> and then nobody wanted to help me that. I was so furious because, listen, I'm from Ghana. I came here to do stuff. And look at how Kenyans are even treating me. Yeah. You know, when they got to know the kind of passport that I was yeah. holding that moment. I think uh, I was arrested in Kenya. That yeah, time. yeah, at the uh, Westgate Mall. Exactly. Yeah. And I, at that moment, I felt like, Kenyans don't like me. Right. But as I kept on coming to Kenya, yeah, yeah, yeah. the last time I was with you in Kenya, like everywhere we go, yeah. hey Maya, yeah, hey yeah, Maya. Yeah. So you can't even can't even get to the car. That was what Oshie, that's what O'Shea yeah. is talking about. Yeah. And um, the worst thing that you've ever heard about yourself, Oshie. Ah, uh, I mean, here in Africa. Yeah. Uh, even online in general. In like, oh, I'm a scammer. <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm smuggling drugs to the world. Uh, let, let's say. Uh, let me say, uh, I, I, I think I, 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 I traffic women to Burundi or something like that. People say, and, 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 and some people who say some of them are even white, right? You, you, hear, you, hear, you hear bad things. Um, but in YouTube, it, as YouTubers, people say, I see videos about you every day <laughs> that, are not, that are not true. Exactly. Um, but that's just, that's just how uh, uh, some of us are as, as, as blacks, you know, so. I, I think I, I need to say this. I mean, I have read a lot of things about O'Shea. I always tell people that if you don't know O'Shea, you might judge him from afar. But when you get closer, O'Shea is a very emotional person. <laughs> O'Shea is a very emotional person. And I see sometimes people online saying that, oh, O'Shea is this, like, that's the way people. I know when I started making videos, when I came to Uganda for the first time, yeah. people were like, I came to Uganda just to, um, I'm taking advantage of the women. Oh, yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah. That was, that was yeah, You a, had that too, yeah. Yeah, that was the reason yeah. why I was deported. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, every single woman that I met in Uganda my first time, I never even had their numbers. Yeah. But online, people were saying yeah, otherwise, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? So me, after knowing O'Shea for that number of years, I feel like sometimes you need to get closer before you judge someone. Like, right. I, I wake up every day, people are saying, what am I is fake, what am I is this, what am I is that. Yeah, but believe me, O'Shea is not what you guys think. Right? As you know, some of the some of the views that I have, so people don't like those views, and so they, they tend to. That's that's personal opinions. Yeah, personal opinions. Yeah. But if they if they see the work that um, I've and I'm not trying to brag, but the work that I've tried to do just to promote Africa, a lot of times, you know, it's, it, it might be me putting my money behind something and you don't know it. Hmm. It might be me, you know, sending my team to cover a farm somewhere in the village and then you don't know it. But um, so again, you expect that from you know, but, but I don't worry about that. I worry about the people who do love what we do, right? And uh, and I wanted you to come here and explore Africa, I mean, explore Uganda again. And uh, look, look at the things you've done, man. I've seen, uh, you know, you 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 break away so many, uh, giving so many people opportunities, yeah. just like you gave me. So that was my my, 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 my reason, of, like you gave my first editor, right? That I, uh, that I, I still have to the day. Yeah. So people are gonna always talk, yeah. but um, how many of them gonna do the work? Personally, all I want to say is um, you got to support people like O'Shea because he's supporting so many people out there. I think, I'm not saying this because O'Shea brought me to Uganda, but even I've been here for the past 26 days, I've seen people that came here because of you. Yeah, yeah. They, they just came here for two days, three days, just because O'Shea is in Uganda. Yeah. So it's more like, I mean, selling a country in your own way. Yeah. I mean, no one is saying that you are an official ambassador for Uganda, but at least people are coming to the country because, yeah. the pre because of your presence. Right. Um, Oshie, if you have a message to your fellow brothers and sisters living in the diaspora, what would that yeah. message be? Um, I would just say, you know, like, we need a lot of help. Um, yeah. we, we need a lot of help in um, bringing, um, telling the, not only just telling the, the story of Africa, but telling our story in Africa. Because, um, like I said, you t you're Africa to the world, right? Yeah. So I think that we need to, number one, first, just in the streets, in America, we need to just even greet each other. This is very common here, right? Mm. And a lot of the blacks that, um, you know, we, we, we don't have any kind of conversation. We mm. pass one up without talking. But if we can get blacks to start talking, mm. then we can have blacks start having relationships. Mm. We will see how this place can change. The whole continent will change. 
And we have the biggest diaspora in the world, one yeah. of the biggest. Yeah. We have the greatest diaspora in the world, the most talented. We have we have all the money that we, we, we need. So if we can just start to, you know, um, leave a lot of the negativity aside. I used to be a negative person about Africa, man, I'm just gonna be honest. I used to be very critical, and in the ways I still am. But then I started to be able to get past that, and man, I just started seeing my life change and go in different directions and, you know. Um, so if we, we need a lot of help here, not just, um, let's say, give your money, I'm not saying that but people to come in and bring new ideas. You come here, you can see how things, um, can, you can do things in a different way yeah. than what's being done here. Mm. That could pull the diaspora in. Mm. And so we need uh, a, a lot of people that want, want to help us. And if you're in Uganda, I'll do my best to, don't, don't call me all the time, but I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll do my best to try to help you guys as much as I can. Jose is trying to say, give Africa the chance. Yeah, G give yourself the chance. Yourself. You, as a black person, you, you know, people think that, you, 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 you know, without Africa, that you, you can't be successful. I mean, I, I can see how you can be, but if you have Africa behind, behind you, I, I, let me say this before we close. I have friends from uh, Africa, and they were saying they were going back home to, to their house or whatever. I didn't never understood that. But living here, I understand the advantages that people have with dual citizenship that come from Africa. And the average African-American doesn't get it. When you, your family has a farm here, your family has businesses here, and then you're in America also doing very well, it, that's, that's, that's a possibility to do a lot of development. So if African-Americans and the Black Caribbeans had the opportunity, you know, to, to, to share in the, in, in the development process and, and provide more opportunities, you can't beat that. Africa is the future, Africa is now, the black world is now. I think we need to go ahead and, and take that opportunity to, to get to know each other better first, and, do, and, and everything else will, will, will take care of itself. Thank you so much for talking to me, and uh, I hope you take me I won't me to charge you. <laughs> take me to the airport, bro, before I miss <laughs> <laughs> Was it good? <laughs>